Hello there and welcome to the Wondershare eDrawMax channel. In today's video, we will discuss creating a UML activity diagram, one of the essential tools for modeling workflows and processes. Activity diagrams are a key component in UML and are used to model the dynamic aspects of a system. They visually represent the workflow of processes within a system, showing the sequence of activities and how they interact. Stick around and by the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of how to create one yourself. Let's get started on the topic. So first of all, activity diagrams are handy in several scenarios within the software development process. Here's when you should consider using them. When mapping out a process or workflow within a system, activity diagrams help visualize the flow from one activity to another. Modeling business processes is another great example as there are great examples of when they would work for representing business workflows where different departments, users, or systems are involved in completing a task. When breaking down use cases is another great time to use these. Activity diagrams really provide a more detailed picture of how a system operates and the actions that occur within it. If you are modeling a system's internal behavior and need to show how different parts interact dynamically, an activity diagram does help clarify the interactions as well. Activity diagrams show how these actions run in tandem when your system includes parallel or concurrent processes. To create an effective UML activity diagram, it is essential to understand the key symbols and notations. These symbols represent different process elements and help convey the flow of activities. The following is the breakdown of the most common symbols. First is going to be the start node. The start node is the place where in every activity diagram there is the beginning. It is depicted as a filled black circle. It marks the entry point of the process or workflow. Second, we have the flow slash control flow. It's an arrow that represents the flow of control from one activity to the next. They guide the direction of the process from start to finish. Third, we have the action slash activity. This is a rounded rectangle and the symbol represents an action or step in each workflow. Each rounded rectangle is labeled with a brief description of the task or activity being performed. Fourth, we have decision notes. It's a diamond shape and is used to represent decision points in the workflow. It shows where the process can branch off into different paths based on conditions with arrows leading to the possible outcomes. Five is the basic flow. The basic flow refers to the standard or primary sequence of actions that takes place in a process without any deviations. It is the path where everything goes as expected from start to finish. Next, we have the returning alternate flow. This is used to represent the merging of several flows. This includes multiple inputs, but one output. Next, we have an alternate flow. This represents a scenario where the process does not follow the basic path due to certain conditions or expectations. And eighth, we have the fork node. A fork node splits a process into multiple parallel activities, indicating that different tasks can occur simultaneously. Parallel activities refer to tasks that can happen simultaneously in a process. These are depicted in an activity diagram using a fork node, where the workflow is divided into multiple branches. Next, we have merge nodes. It's similar in appearance to a decision node. A merge node combines multiple alternative paths back into one. And last, we have the end node. This signifies the completion of the process or workflow in an activity diagram. It's represented as a filled black circle with a border, and it marks the complete endpoint where all activities have been completed. Now, we also do have swim lanes. These are either vertical or horizontal sections. Swim lanes divide the diagram into different sections to show who or what is responsible for each part of the process. These are commonly used to depict roles, departments, or systems. So let's talk about swim lanes next. When using swim lanes in an activity diagram, you can divide the workflow into different sections, assigning specific responsibilities to concerned parties. They enhance clarity by showing which party is responsible for each action in a process. Let's go through some helpful instructions for using swim lanes effectively. Effectively. First, let's align activities. Ensure that each action or activity is placed within the appropriate swim lane. Tie the task to the responsible entity to ensure it is easy to read throughout the process. To avoid clutter and confusion, you need to make sure that the number of swim lanes remains manageable. Thus, do not add more than five swim lanes. Activities often move between swim lanes as different entities take over tasks. Make sure the flow of activities across swim lanes is smooth and logical with clear control flows. Creating an activity diagram involves a series of steps that help you map out the workflow or process clearly and accurately. You can follow these steps to create a clear and effective UML activity diagram. First, 
You can add swim lanes by drawing swim lanes if your diagram involves multiple participants or systems. These lanes help organize the diagram by assigning specific roles or entities responsible for each action. Make sure each lane is clearly labeled to represent a person, department, or system involved. Step two, identify the actors who are involved. Next, determine the actors or entities participating in the workflow. These could be users, departments, external systems, or even software components. Each actor should be placed in the appropriate swim lane to establish their role. Now break down the use case into individual action steps. Identify the specific activities or tasks and assign them to the appropriate swim lanes. Rounded rectangles will represent these actions and should flow logically from one to the next. With the action steps in place, connect them using control flows to illustrate the sequence of events. You can add decision nodes where necessary to represent points where the process might branch into alternate or parallel paths. Finally, ensure the flow is smooth and understandable from the start and end nodes. Now that we know how to create an activity diagram, let us explore a powerful tool that can simplify the process, Wondershare eDraw Max. This versatile diagramming software offers a user-friendly interface and a wide range of templates and symbols tailored for UML diagrams, including activity diagrams. This AI-powered tool includes everything from templates and symbols to diagrams and customization features. Let's go through the process of creating an activity diagram via this tool. First, you're going to launch the product and you're gonna to go to the Home tab. If we click here on More, we can then go to Software Development. From the list of available options, tap the UML Activity Diagram, which is gonna be right here, and click Blank Drawing to start the procedure. Now, rather than picking a blank diagram, you also can use one of the pre-made templates and make adjustments from there. And this is what an example UML diagram could look like. Inside of the more symbols area, what you can do is you can search for the UML activity diagram. So if we grab this one right here, then from there, after this is checked off, it'll show up on your bar here. And if you wanted to add any other different arrows or dividers that are needed, you absolutely can. Very simple and easy to do process here. You simply have to just drag anything you want um, over to the side on this and then uh, make any adjustments to connect them or add more items from this diagram section over here. There are a lot of examples of different nodes that were talked about earlier in the video, and these are all in showcase here and are connecting the different steps in the process for this diagram. As you can see as well, the connectors are able to be edited and created uh, over here. There is this option to make different curved connectors between items and uh, also just different straight ones, freeform ones, connection point tools are all over here. So definitely recommend you try those out. And if you want, you can also go to this section over here and grab the basic drawing shapes as well and uh, utilize any of these inside of this too. Rectangles, circles, triangles, many more things. If you wanna use text, you can grab this item right here and write out any text that you want by clicking on this text and clicking right here. Once you're done with creating it though, you can click on the design tab. As you can see, there are a bunch of preset stylings you can make as well as this theme section over here that allows you to change it. So if I press this one, it changes the color scheme and the style and you can click on any of them and click on styles and make an adjustment to that specific entity itself. You also can right click on the canvas to choose all connectors. So select all connectors. And then you can go to the line tab style and you can see I can change all of those right here. So you can select all connectors here, then make adjustments to the style of the connectors as well if you'd like. And if I wanted to change the color of all those lines, I absolutely could. As you can see over here, I can change the color of the line to whatever I'd want but I'm gonna keep it as black just for the purposes of this video. You can also right click on the drawing page to select all text and modify any of the text according to your preferences. This text session allows you to change the font across all of these different pieces of text right here and the change all across the diagram. So lots of customization in the product here. To further illustrate the capabilities of Wondershare eDraw Max, let's take a look at some practical examples of activity diagrams created using this tool. These examples highlight how activity diagrams can effectively visualize workflows in various domains. This diagram outlines the process of overseeing an order transaction from the moment a customer places an order to its fulfillment. So here's an example of one here. We have a bank UML activity diagram. The bank UML activity diagram illustrates the steps involved in typical banking operations, such as an account creation, 
funds transfer, and loan processing. Now, if you take a look at this one here, you actually have a BGM, which is a verified gross mass UML activity diagram. And it's particularly useful in the logistics and shipping industry. As you can see, there's a lot of the different steps that occur in logistical processes here. And that's where today's video ends. Thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial on creating UML activity diagrams using Wondershare eDraw Max. We have covered everything from the fundamentals of activity diagrams and their symbols to practical drawing steps and real world examples, highlighting their effectiveness. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials. Feel free to share your thoughts or questions in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.